So this is the last part in our game data system and we are going to finish it, encoding our data to something not so easy to edit, and parsing the CSV for my text into a dictionary in Godot. While I have developed the game data idea from CSV to Godot, with this knowledge you can build your own data import systems, which you should do if your game needs data in a different way. So let's go! Let's talk about how our data is exposed, which maybe for you it's fine, but everyone can edit your data too easily, it is pure human readable text. This is bad news if you don't want your players to easily edit your game data in order to get an advantage. This can also generate errors if the expected data type doesn't match our import logic scripted later. So not so good news, we want to avoid that or at least make it not so easy to change with. But at the same time, we don't want to encrypt the file with something complex either. If someone wants to mod your game or change something, this will potentially block them and be an extra hassle to deal with. In Godot, you can encrypt files in many different ways. We are going to be using Base64 in Godot for the object Marshals. Basically, it will turn our data into a scheme of characters, which was used back in the day for emails. So here's how this is going to work. Our CSV files are the human readable CSV text files. We are going to duplicate that file with a new extension, encode it as a base64 and save it on the same folder. Then later when you export the game, we are just going to allow the .data files to be exported. This will allow you to see what is happening with the data before it gets encrypted, but only export with your game the encrypted .data files. So now it's time for a new module, so let's create the new module to handle the data compiler. So let's go here and let's add a new script and let's place the script on the script folder and we're going to call this as module data compiler. This is going to handle our main data needs. So same as before, let's copy this right here and this is the module. So one of the first things we're going to need here is to add our module constants. So let's go right here and let's do, I believe our globals. So we can copy this, let's press Ctrl C and let's paste here. We are going to need this module. So our first main two functions, our two static functions are going to be our encode and decode functions. So let's go ahead and stack the function. And this is going to be encode data to a string. And this is going to ask for a text, which is a simple string. And this function does not return anything. And actually, I think this function should return the encoded data. So we are going to actually return a string this time. And let's go here and return. And this is where the magic is going to happen. We're going to be accessing our marshals object, which as you can see here, is used for data transformation with marshalling. So let's go back here and we are going to use the function utf8 to base64. And the text is going to encode is our text here. So this simple function is going to be responsible for us to encode our UTF text to base64. We also are going to need the reverse of that. So we're going to create function decode data to string. And same thing, we're going to need a string here. And this function is also going to return a string and it's going to return our marshals object. But this time we are going to be using base64 to UTF8. And this is the text. These two functions are going to be responsible to convert to base64 and to convert back to as a text form. And you can see right here all the details of the function and what it's used for. Now let's go to our file manager and create some functions. So we want to create here four new functions. So let's give the first one static func and this is going to save a text file and we are going to use this to store and save our data file back to from the .csv to .data file. So this returns nothing, so void. And let's go ahead and, and get our file. So file, which is a file access is equal to file access dot open. And we are going to open our file path. So let's add it here. So file path and name. So we know we're also passing not only the file name, but the path to it as well. So we know we are actually passing the file path with the name of the document. And we also are going to be asking for a text to which you are going to save it. So let's open the text file and let's go right here and pass it 
to our open and we are going to write it. So we are going to save the file and we are going to do file.startString and this is basically how you store text inside a file. And the string we are going to be storing is the text we give to this function. Then lastly, we are going to close the file. So this should be able to save our text file. Now let's create a new one that do the reverse of that, which is going to load our text file. So it's going to actually return a string because it's our text from the file. And we are going to ask for a file path and name. So same thing here. And we are going to say here, so our text, which is going to be a string, is going to be from the file access dot open. And here we pass the file path and name. And now we're going to read the file. Then later you can do get as text. And this should return the file as the text information, which is what we want. And now the last thing remaining is for us to return that as the text. So this function now can return the text file we just gave it. Now another function we are going to create is static func file exist. So this is going to be useful if we want to edit something later and we don't know if the file actually exists in a folder. And this function is going to return a boolean check. So it's going to return an yes or no question. And the question is if file access dot file exists and which is in this case is the path we're going to return the function as true so it's going to say that that check was successfully otherwise we are going to return it as a false and we should be printing some kind of error here so we know what is happening here so let's do a print error and let's say module file manager and we're going to say file does not exist pass here the file the path to the file so path and let's put a space here and we're going to simply pass the path so print error is a little different than the common print it prints on one or more arguments to a string in the best way possible to a standard error line so it's going to print as a red line in the debug window and with this we should be able to continue so let's save. So now it should be a good idea for us to create the file formats we're going to use for checking the CSV data. So let's go to our module constants here and let's add a new format, which is going to be simple as string. So CSV data is a string and we're going to say this is dot CSV data and a format for our data files. So if you want later to change it, this is going to be an odd place and you can change it very easily. So this is going to be our format data. So now we are going to go back to our file manager and now we are going to create a function which is going to convert our dot file, our dot CSV file to a data file. So static func and we're going to say this in cold data file. Okay. And this function is not going to return anything, but we are going to need a path, a file path to the current file we want to encode. Here we're going to first check if the file exists. This is being quite important. So if file exists and we pass the file path. And if so, if that is the case, if the file does not exist, we are going to simply return. And let's say here, we are going to now get the file we are going to load so load file data it's going to be in our file access we're going to open that file we wanted so the file we passed on the string here and we're going to read that file and get it as text so we are getting the file as text and now we want the save file path to be changed so here's how we are going to change the extension from .csv to .data this is going to be a string and this is going to get our file path string and replace the extension so now because we have the on our module constants we can go right here and I'm going to copy the module constant because we're going to use it now. And we're going to get for our module constants the format, which is the CSV data. And we are going to simply replace it with our formats of dot data. Now this function, we need to save the file, but first let's encode the file. So encode the text, which is going to be a string. And now we also are going to need our from our data compiler, these two functions. So we are going to duplicate this 
and I'm going to say module data compiler. So right here, we need to replace this. By the way, you can press control space bar to activate again the auto completion. And let's go right here and grab our module data compiler. So now this encoded text string can be our module data compiler. And I'm going to say here it's encode data to string. And the string we're going to encode is the loaded file data. So load file data. So now that we have the encoded text is simply we access the same function here. Save text file and the file path is going to be the save file path and the text which is going to be the encoded the text and it's encoded yeah I misspelled that so as you can see here what we're we going to do with this function if the file does not exist we're going to return so the file is for some reason does not exist we're going to load our our data file as text so we'll grab first the text file which is going to be our csv.csv data file then we're going to get, grab its current path and we're going to replace the extension on this string. And this string is going to be used later to save the file here. And we are going to encode the text finally using our module data compiler encode data to string, which was the function we just created using the Marshall's UTF to base 64. So this should be able to create a series of files which are going to convert a .csv plain readable text as encoded on base64. So let's save this. So let's go back here on our data compiler and let's create a new function which is going to generate .data files first. So static func and I'm going to say compile csv data files and this function is not going to return anything so void. So for each file in their access. So I'm going to list all the files in a given folder. And this is going to be our folder to the data file of the project. And I believe we have this folder here, which is the folder to there. So let's go here and let's get for our module constant, our path to the folder data. So I'm going to list all the files in our data folder. And we're going to analyze if the file is going to be ending so we're going to check the extension if it ends on the format dot data these are the actually the csv data these are going to be the oh i just noticed a mistake here formata is format data let's replace here let's go to our file manager yeah we use format as well Okay, so fix that typo. So if our file ends in the format .csv data, we want to change it and switch the extension to the other one. So, so we are going to need to load our file module here. And let me just fix this typo here. So let's duplicate this. So we need that function we just created on the file manager, which was the encode the file. So module file manager dot encode data file and if you remember here module data encode data file is going to ask for the file path the file path to the folder data so mc dot path folder data plus our file so what we are doing here for each file in the directory path folder data which is this guy in the find on the module constant if the file ends as dot csv data we want to encode that data file as dot data file and we ask for the module file manager encode data file function and we pass here the path to the folder data plus the file and the extension which is inside here our file manager module here is going to grab that path and turn that dot csv data file into a dot data file so with this we should be able to go to our auto load here so let's add our data compiler i'm going to copy this module data compiler so using our module data compiler so this is going to automatically turn our data or csv data files into data files so let's save this now if you open our file manager here you can notice we only have our dot csv data file so let's go back to godot and run our scene and it's going to run this test scene here 
And when that runs, the auto load is going to run and we are going to be converting our .csv data file to a data file. And as you can see here, our .csv data file is here, but we have a new file, our .data file. So if we open here our notepads.csv data file, and we can see our data from the spreadsheet, but our data file now is encrypted as base64. And this will be the file we want to bundle in our games as the data files. Now this is the same text as this, but encoded as base64. And you can see why it's pretty useful. Here we can pretty much read all the data we have written, and we can add it as easily as we want. But if it's encoded as base64, it's not that easy to one, understand, and two, to edit. And this is easy for you to find on the internet, translators that convert from the base64 to text, etc. But you are going to be spending a little more time. And this is one of the reasons that I wanted to encode it, which for me works just fine. And by the way, I forgot to talk about something. If you are having these triple quotes when you export from your ODS, all you have to do is come here on the macro. Remember that I said I would not change it. <laughs> yeah, you got to change it. Then you got to come here where there is a ACI code for the double quote. And you're going to put here zero. This is going to disable the macro from detecting text as double quotes. So when you export the double quotes here, it is not going to add these triple quotes here. So if you will save and export a data and I'm going to grab here my CSV data and you can see it's fixed now with a single string. This can cause some bugs in Godot yeah. because when you import this file as a text, it adds another quote above everything else. So this can actually potentially cause bugs when you have triple quotes. So know that about this, that you have to change the macro so we can fix the exports. So now it's time for us to parse that string CSV data as dictionary with usable variants for us, like integers, floats, vector2, etc. To convert a string to a variant, we can use string to var. So this function right here, which belongs to the global scope, as you can see, converts a formatted string that is returned by the var to string, which is the inverse. And as you can see here, this is a string information because of the single quote here. And when you do a string to var using that data information, it's going to print that as a dictionary. But when we print the dictionary A, it's going to print one. So this is the basic idea which we are going to use to convert our CSV data into usable variants inside Godot. So the complicated part now might be how to structure a function that would turn the CSV formatted text into dictionary, which we are going to call it a CSV parser. So let's do that now. So let's Let's create a parser to turn this data into our dictionaries inside Godot. And we are going to do it step by step. I'm going to explain the best I can because this can get complicated if you don't follow the code. So let's go to our data compiler and let's create a new function. We are going to say that this function is data parser and we are going to pass the csv lines as a package string array because we are going to use the split function with the delimiter so all csv lines are going to be requested here as a packet string array so packet string array is because when you use the string function here and use the split method this guy here is going to return a string array this is quite useful for us because the delimiter is going to be the same column which we use here when exported from our macro so this is how you're going to get each csv cell from the string line so let's go back here to our data compiler and this function is going to return our beloved dictionary so how you are going to start this well first thing we want to create the variable that's going to return our dictionary so our stored csv dictionary so let's call dict and this is going to be a dictionary so this dictionary is going to be the returned dictionary so this is going to be defined here i'm going to return it at the end of the function so start csv dictionary so let's start now by first see if all the csv lines are if this variable is valid so if all csv lines dot size is more than one 
So this is going to check if the data passed is valid. And we actually need two lines for this to work. So the first line, we want it to be the header and the second and third line and so forth is going to be the data. If we pass a information here, we want at least to have two rows here. So the first row is going to be the headers of the CSV and the second, the actual data. So this ensures that the passed string array is going to have at least those two, those two entries. So let's go ahead and let's create our first variable variable here and this variable is going to ask if we already processed the headers of the CSV. So this is going to be a boolean and it's going to start as false. We also are going to be grabbing the CSV headers. So var CSV line headers and this is going to be an array so we can use it later. So now let's start parsing it for CSV line in all CSV lines. So we are grabbing a single CSV line. So for a string line of the CSV data file. And let's increase here the text here. And I'm going to add here a landmark, the CSV process line. So you can start grouping the code to be a little easier to understand later. So if our CSV line is not empty, so it could be the case that one of the lines is empty. We want to ignore it. So this is going to allow us to ignore empty strings, which is the case like a end of a file. Normally use a blank space there. So if that is valid, we're going to grab the first cell. So the first cell is going to be the first string value that's going to be separate. The first cell is going to be a string and it's going to grab the CSV line, the first entry of the CSV line. We are passing the all CSV lines, which is a packet string. So it's going to pass like so, a array of strings. And each string is going to be like something A, B, C, D. And we're going to grab our first cell from there, which is going to be, for example, A. And why we want this? We want this because here we are going to make sure that the file, the string we are importing is an actual valid CSV cell. So we're going to create a bunch of ifs here now. The first thing we want to make sure if our cell begins with the comment here, which I chose to make comments on my spreadsheet. So we are going to keep adding here more checks but the first check which we want here is not begins as as a comment so we don't want any any cells that start with a comment the second thing we don't want is the first cell to only have a semicolon this means that the cell is somewhat empty but it still has the semicolon for some reason so this is going to make sure our sec our first cell does not is empty so if the first cell is empty we are going to ignore the line as well the first cell does not have only the delimiter which is the, our semicolon and the last one we are going to type here it's going to be our first cell not being a blank string cell so this can happen if you leave a cell blank for some reason when you import it this will make sure that we do not import that first cell the so the entire line is going to be discarded if the first cell is empty so the first cell should not have only blank strings which is the case with double quotes here to define the string so if everything we just said here is actually valid then we know that this string CSV line is valid. So we can actually import this line as data inside our game. And we can do something here to do, use as a debugger later. So let's type here a comment and this is going to print. And I can actually disable the comment now. So this is going to print a processing valid CSV string line. And we're going to say here our CSV line so this you can use for you to see uh, in the output here at real time how the import process is going so next we want to get now that the now that we make sure that that line is useful for us 
we want to grab it as split and information. So now it's time for us to actually separate the, the various strings using the delimiter. So this is going to be a packet string array, which is going to be returned for our CSV line, split it using the delimiter we gave on our ODS project sheet. So what this is going to do is we're going to grab the CSV line, which grabbed from the all CSV lines, pass it as a package string array from the data part CSV, which is going to load our data files that text information. So this is going to grab our CSV split data from the CSV line split it with the semicolon delimiter. So now we actually start to process the CSV. So let's call here process CSV line headers. So let's first create our headers from the spreadsheet file. So if we go back here, we want to first create, save these headers here, which we're going to use later. So if you go here, we're going to ask if our CSV headers were not processed yet. So this is the first thing we're going to use. We are going to create a new integer here, which is going to be used down here. And I'm going to say for each header in the CSV splitted data. So the first line of our spreadsheets should always have the headers we are going to use. So this is a kind of rule for this type of data to work. And you can change here based on the data you want to be imported. So for mine, I want something automated. So for reach header on the top here, I want to first save it as a different line header. So our CSV line headers, which we created up here, is going to hold our headers, which we are going to create later the dictionary. So the CSV line headers is an array we're going to append. We are going to interpret that header. So the CSV split data using the integer. So what are we doing here? First, we generate uh, an integer. So we can actually cycle through all the cells from our CSV split data, which should be the first line of the spreadsheet, which should have the headers on the top. So based on that, we are going to append each one of those headers interpreted as a variance inside Gudio. And this is how you can do it. And for the next one, we increase the I, so it's going to cycle through all the, the string the information on that on the CSV line. So after we have done this, we are going to simply say that our headers have been processed. And we're going to grab that Boolean we defined earlier. And we're going to say that actually we have now our CSV headers processed. And the CSV headers are going to be stored on a variable here on the CSV line headers. So for each line is going to remember our current CSV line headers. So the next thing we want here is to actually process our the CSV line pieces. So process the CSV line pieces. And what we are going to process here. If we did not process the headers, we're going to process the headers and skip the line. So if we already process the headers, then we are going to actually start building the data itself. So this is going to be going to place this here. So this is going to actually start processing the line pieces. Let's do a, so we're going to store each information inside a dictionary. So this is going to be the entry ID, which is going to be interpreted from the string from the CSV split data, which is the first one. The first cell, we are going to be creating an ID. So let me just fix here and give you an example. Here, for instance, we can have a ID which you are going to save each of these data. And you can use here a number or anything else you want. This is one of the ways you can group the information inside the dictionary so you can refer them back. This is the part of the game data that's going to be static reference that I talked about in the previous videos. So here we can say name and age. And if you remember, strings we want to have as double quotes, everything else we can keep as it is. So name, let's give here a couple of names. Let's put here Robert. Let's give the last one. So let's save and export this data we have, which is going to be used here when we give it a test. So we are saving that data inside an entry ID. 
Now let's create a integer which is going to cycle through all the pieces of the CSV line. I'm going to start it at zero. So for each CSV data, which you are going to be getting from the CSV splitted line data, the CSV line is split using the string function, process each part of that string cell. So let's type here landmark for us to know later on same CSV line. And so this is going to actually process the line pieces. So we have a loop for each thing inside this function. For each piece of that line, we are going to first see if we already have an entry for that variable so you can store it on the dictionary. So for our stored CSV dictionary, we want to check if it's keys, if you already have that entry ID. So here we're going to pass the entry ID. So this negates the check, it's inverted to be negative. If we do not have that entry as keys of our stored dictionary, we're going to create first that entry so we can later store it. So we're going to create the ID if not present. And how you create an entry inside a dictionary? Well, one of the ways you can do is, let me put here the dictionary, you're going to use brackets and we're going to say entry ID. So we're going to create the entry ID as a empty blank dictionary. And this we are going to be using later. So first we created the entry for the dictionary. Next, we are going to actually store the data. We're going to grab our CSV dictionary, the entry ID, which we are creating the for to hold the data. We are going to now grab the header we created from our CSV headers. So I'm going to put space here just so you, it keeps a little more easily to see. So from the CSV line headers array, we are going to grab the CSVI. And from that, we are going to assign to that dictionary entry a, a variance interpreted from the string V from the CSV data. So what is going to do here is going to access our stored CSV dictionary, which we want to return from the parse CSV data. It's going to grab the entry ID we gave it, which is the first cell of the CSV data. So if you go back here, this is the first CSV data we want. So we want to group the dictionary inside a single reference, which is going to be the ID. So that is how we are going to do it. And we are going to create a new entry inside the dictionary, which is going to be the CSV line headers. So the CSV line headers here is going to be called name. So it's going to say on the zero entry, the name of that guy is going to be the CSV data. And the CSV data is going to be Josh. So on the first entry, the name of the first entry is going to be Josh. And that is how it is going to loop through your CSV and create the entries we need. I will show you later how the dictionary will behave. So next, for us to finish, we need to cycle through the, all the cells of the line. So let's do here the CSVI plus equal one. And this is going to simply cycle to the next entry of the same CSV line. So this is the parse function which you are going to use to create the CSV as dictionary. So let us exemplify everything that's happening with this data parse CSV. So here's what I am going to do very quickly. I'm going to go to our data folder Let's copy the CSV data. And I'm going to use here a couple of this data here to exemplify what is happening. Let's go back to our Godot and let me exemplify what is happening here. So everything here, it's imported as a single string. So everything is just one big string. What happens is this data gets imported through here as each one as a separate line. And these lines are placed inside a array, which is the one we pass it through here on all CSV lines, CSV lines. So this is the first entry, this will be the second and so forth. All CSV lines are equal to this. Now, 
once that passes through and we go here on the process line and we have this so we want to separate each line so each line is its own entry on that array when that happens we get each line as a separate one now each line is a single string this is what happens at this stage of the function when we get down here we want to process these things right here on the top which we are going to call it headers so the process csv headers are this part here and not these two so these two are excluded and these two are parsed down here so this is the stage of which the function is going to handle the data itself and here's what's happening here the entry id is going to be the first one of the string so the first cell so the entry id here is going to be zero and because we are interpreting it to string, it was text previously, now it's an integer. And integer are generally faster than string. So our target data structure is like this. We want to create a dictionary entry in another dictionary. And the second dictionary, it's going to be the, a copy of the header, which is the name. And we want to assign the value of the name of it. So it's going to be josh and we do the same thing then the next entry is going to be the second header which is age and we are going to define the second slot information which is going to be 20 and this right here is the second entry of the, the dictionary entry so this is how the function is creating the structured data so each data is going to have an entry id which is going to be zero then we're going to have a copy of the first header which is going to be name and assign the first cell data here which is going to be josh and so forth so this is basically what is happening inside this function So now we can parse CSV files, but now we need to run this through our globals here for us to see. We are going to have a dictionary, which is going to be our first one you are going to set. And the name of the dictionary must be the same name as the spreadsheet name. But now we are going to also need a dictionary of dictionaries of which we want the data. So I actually need to grab their names to be used on the data compiler. So what I'm going to say here is data dictionaries, and this is going to be also a dictionary. And here's what we, I want. I'm going to use it later. I'm going to need the name of the dictionary and the actual dictionary. And this is going to be used on the data compiler. So, so now let's create a function here that is going to grab all those dictionaries and parse each, each CSV accordingly. So the first thing we want is to create a function. So build data dictionaries. There we go. And this is going to return nothing. So void. And here we want to pass the dictionaries, which is actually a dictionary itself. So we are going to say that we are going to have the variables dict names, which is an array, and this is going to be dictionary dot keys. So the keys of the outer load global data dicts are going to return the names of the dictionary, but we also want the dictionary entries, let's say variables, and this is going to be an array of the dictionary. We're going to grab from the dictionary their values. So now we can say for dictionary in dictionary names. And I'm going to create here an I so we can use this later. And we're going to increase it by one so we can iterate through the array. So for each dictionary inside the names of the dictionary, I want to create to grab a file and assign it back to that dictionary. So what we are going to need here is almost the same thing as this guy. We're going to say that for each file inside the folder, so we're going to grab the dictionary data file. So for each file there, we're going to check if their, their extension is .data. And we are going to say that if that is the case, then 
we have an encoded data, which is the string. And we're going to use the file load manager here. And I'm going to load that text file. And that text file is the file name, but also we need here the path to the folder. So we're going to load that as text information. With that one, we are going to decode that data because that information is encoded as base64, if you remember. So the decoded data is going to be a string which is going to grab our encoded data and we are going to decode this information. We are going to use the decode data to string. Mess the names there. Now we have here the CSV back. But now I want to have the splitted CSV information. All CSV lines, which is a packet string array, is going to be equal. The decode data, which is a string, but we are going to split it. And we are going to split based on a return carriage and the end of each line. So if you are on Windows, you're going to need to place this right here. Otherwise, if you are on Linux or other systems, you probably are going to need only the new line command here. So you're going to test this and see how it works. All CSV lines now should be returned. If the file ends as that format, but also if the file name can count. So if the file name has the name of the dictionary, so dict, we are going to place it here. So for each file, if the file has the name of that dictionary, and that file ends as format data, we know that that file should be assigned back to that dictionary. So we're going to grab from the dict vars or I, and I'm going to say it's equal to data parse or CSV lines. So this is basically assign the dictionaries you give to this function, be parsed as CSV files if the data file has the name of the dictionary and if it ends on dot data format. So if you go back to global, here on autoload globals data compiler and i'm going to say oh it's the name of that function it's build data dictionaries build data dictionaries and i'm going to simply pass the data dictionaries so now this should be able to generate those data dictionaries on the output and i want to print the game data dictionary and I'm going to see if this is working appropriately. So now if you run our scene, it's going to print all the files on the folder. I don't think I need this anymore. So I'm going to comment. It's going to compile all CSV data files and we're going to build the data dictionary. So let's run the scene and see if we get any errors. And as you can see here, we process, this is the debug line for the parser CSV. However, as you can see, our data dictionary is empty. The issue is on, we are getting dict vars, which is a copy of the dictionary value. So here it works as a copy. So what we want is to alter actually the dictionary values, but we want the entry that has that name. So the name of that dictionary is on dict names. And here we use the integer. So now we are actually grabbing the dictionary, which has the name we want. And then we can assign it to the parse data here. So I believe this should fix the issue because previously we were adding just the dictionaries inside this case. So what we can do is I'm going to delete this here and let's leave global auto load. And this is going to be called, let's just say data for now. This later can be a auto load by itself. So we are going to pass the data dicks as the data and we're going to print data and the game data here no longer exists. So this is going to be an empty dictionary. So now we are actually hold, storing the data as a separate one. So now if you run our scene, we should be able to see that. And the only thing I'm going to do is go back to data compiler and going to mute the processing valid CSV string line. And when we run our scene, here we go. We have our game data. So how can you print this information so we can see it better? Well, we can use JSON to do that. And I'm going to stringify the data one. So this should print a nice tree one, but I believe to miss here a parameter, which is the ident string, which is going to be this guy right here. So if we do that and we run the scene, we should be able to see here. Finally, after everything we did, 
we have now a dictionary struct in our game. So this is inside video running. So we have here our game data, which holds an ID, which holds a string. And this string is a header file, which is copied to all the entries. And now we finally have everything we wanted. So this was the goal of our system. And now we can do a lot of different things. So we can say print data and we want the game data. And we can print something we have already here. So let's just say ID zero. Now this should print age, ID, name. I don't know how that is going to behave on the debugger and it did not. So maybe that's because we use a stringify and covered everything to a string that is actually an integer. And here you go. You can see now it appears everything that belonged to the entry zero. So here is a it is put as string because of the string file of the JSON. That is not actually how it's working. So as you can see here, we have ID zero, name Josh, and age 20. So that is why it's useful if we place here name Josh. So this is going to print Josh. So let's see if that works. And as you can see here, Josh. So this is how you actually going to use this information on any system inside your game. You create a structure after you parse everything and then later you can use this. So you can see we are printing from the game data the entry zero its name. So if you go back here and we alter this to say something like very random and let's save and export when we run the scene it should print binakpe. So this is the power of game data. Now you have a system that is actually printing all that information that you typed on the spreadsheet to Godot. And here is it, everything we have built it. So this is how this system works. And you can do this in different ways. It turned out to be a little more complex than my other project because I'm using a different way of loading the data. Yeah, the build a data dictionary was a little more complex than I would like it to be in this video. But the important part was the parse data CSV. So this is how everything should work. And now you have a way of storing global data. So let us recap what we did until here. We encoded the data as base64. This will serve as a simple layer of protection in order to avoid the data being completely exposed as human readable text, which isn't a problem. But we want to discourage people easily adding the game data to gain an artificial advantage. This simple layer of encoding serves this purpose just fine. We created a CSV parser to Godot dictionary, which allows us to have the spreadsheet data in Godot as a dictionary data, interpreted using the string to var function. So this is quite useful now. Now, this series about game data could have been expanded a little more and we can have further develop it, but for our needs, it's going to work just fine. The usage of this game data in our project will be exemplified in further videos and why this series was so important. So we continue to develop our RTS in future videos. Make sure you are subscribed and watch the other videos on the playlist if you are interested in the different areas of creating an RTS. So that is for this part, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to post your questions, like if you found this video useful, dislike if you didn't. This part ends here and I will see you something fresh on our RTS in the next video.